Hey, Miss Miklos here. And this lecture, we are discussing absolute value functions. And this is probably something that you have never seen before. Um, so this is the general equation that you guys need to know. Y equals A times the absolute value of X minus H plus K. And on every single graph that we're going to be dealing with today, there are four different characteristics that we are going to be writing down. The very first is the vertex. And just to kind of explain what this is, absolute value graphs form a V shape. So remember value V and the vertex is where the V comes together. So that point where the two rays intersect. We call that our vertex. So the way that we find the vertex is H, K. Now I want to point out that it says negative H in here. So what we're doing is we are taking the opposite of that value. So if it said X minus 2, we would write 2. If it said X plus 7, we would write 7. And then our Y value of our vertex is whatever our constant is. And so in this case, if it said plus 5, it would be 5. If it said minus 20, it would be negative 20. So that is the very first characteristic that we are going to be writing today. The second characteristic is where the V opens. So if it opens up or if it opens down. If it opens up, this A value is going to be greater than 0. If it opens down, this A value is going to be less than 0. The third one is going to be talking about the width of our graph. And since this is absolute value, we can kind of think of it like a slope. And we're going to use some non-mathematical terms, but we will use these throughout this particular course. Fatty means the absolute value A is less than 1. So I will often say fatty, fatty fraction. So if I have 1 half or if I have negative 1 third, I know that it is a fat function. If this A value is less, I'm sorry, is greater than 1, so if it said like 5 or negative 7, then we would say it's skinny. And if it's equal to 1, so that would be a coefficient of 1 or a coefficient of negative 1, then we would say that it is normal. The final characteristic we're writing, we call our line of symmetry. And that is an equation because it is a line and it is x equals h. Okay, so what we're doing, we're taking the x value of the vertex and it's telling us that this v is symmetric on that line. So on every single graph today, you guys should be writing these four characteristics down. So let's get into an example here. Number one, um, the directions tell us to graph and list the four characteristics. And our graph is f of x equals the absolute value of x plus 4. So the first thing we're going to list is our vertex. We said to find the x value of our vertex, I'm taking the opposite of the value inside the absolute value symbol. So since it says x plus 4, I'm going to write an x value of negative 4. Our y value we call k, and that's whatever we are adding back here. Since I'm not adding anything, I would say our vertex is at negative 4, 0. Our second thing we need to figure out is, is this v, is this absolute value graph going up or is it opening down? So we need to look at our a value. Okay, Our a value is the coefficient out in front of the absolute value sign. So in this case, I don't see anything, so we know that that means that it is really 1. So since a is equal to 1, 1 is positive, so we're going to say that it opens up. Also, since a is 1, we would say that it is normal because the absolute value of 1 is equal to 1. And our final characteristic is our line of symmetry, which is x equals and then I'm going to look in my vertex and I notice negative 4 is the x value in my vertex. So I'm going to write x equals negative 4. Now when I'm graphing this, I'm going to begin at negative 4, 0 and put a point. Up and normal means that I'm going to go up 1 
and over one in both directions and I'm going to go ahead and draw my V. The final thing I'm going to sketch is our line of symmetry and that is a dashed line because these are not solutions but it's showing that I understand that if I fold it on this line these two sides are really symmetric to one another. So this would be our graph of our absolute value function. Let's do one that is a little bit more difficult now. So if we look at number two, there's definitely more stuff going on. First thing I need to figure out is our vertex. So I'm going to look inside absolute value, I have negative one. So we are going to write one. After the absolute value, I have plus three, and I know it's kind of, my writing didn't show up that well. But what that means is that my y value in my vertex is going to be a three. For our next two characteristics, we need to figure out what is our a value, and looking at it, our a value here is equal to four. So a few things that tells us. Since 4 is positive, we know that this is going to be going up. Also, since 4 is greater than 1, the absolute value of 4 is greater than 1, we would say that this is skinny. In fact, we're going to treat this like a slope, and instead of going up 1 to the right 1, I'm going to go up 4 and to the right 1. The final characteristic that we are going to write down is our line of symmetry, which is going to be x equals, this time my x value here is 1. So when I'm graphing this on our graph, I'm going to start at 1, 3, and put a point. Now I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. I'm also going to go up 4 and over 1 in the other direction. And now I'm going to try my best here to draw a nice V shape. I'm also going to sketch my line of symmetry, just showing that I understand that this V is symmetric. And our final example of the day, y equals negative 1 half times the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 2. So we're going to go ahead and list out our characteristics. So the first characteristic, once again, is our vertex. So I'm gonna to have to go ahead and figure out what is the opposite of negative one, and that is one. My y value would be two, because that is what we are adding after our absolute value. This time, our a value is negative one half. So I need to think, should this be opening up or down? And since negative one-half is negative, it's less than zero, we're going to say that it opens down. The third characteristic is if it's fatty, skinny, or normal. So if we look at negative one-half, the absolute value of that is less than one. That is a fatty, fatty fraction. So we're going to say it's fatty. And finally, our line of symmetry we know is a vertical line, so it's x equals, and our x value in our vertex is 1, so I'm going to write x equals 1. So when I'm actually graphing this, I'm going to begin at 1, 2. It's down and fat, and in fact our a value is negative 1 half. So I'm going to go down 1 and to the right 2 in both directions. Lastly, I'm drawing my line of symmetry to show that I understand that it is symmetric. The final concept that you're going to be learning is looking at a graph and writing the equation of it. Okay, so whenever I see a V-shaped graph, I know that it is in the form of our absolute value. So, I know it's going to be Y equals, or we could write F of X, it doesn't matter, absolute value of x, I might be adding something, I might be adding something after, and our a value might be a little bit different. So the very first thing I need to figure out here is what is our vertex? And our vertex looks like it is at, it is at 2, 0. 
Okay, and up above here, I'm just going to remind us that y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Technically, that is our um, equation for absolute value. We know that our h value here comes from the x value. So since it's minus h, I'm going to have to do minus 2. Our k value comes from whatever our y value is. So in this case, it's like plus 0. Now we know eventually I'm not going to have to write plus 0, but I just want to kind of signify where this is coming from. Lastly, to find our a value, okay, a is kind of like a slope, so I'm going to look and see what's happening, and it looks like it's going up one and to the right one, so that would be like a slope of 1. So I'm going to write this as y equals the absolute value of x minus 2. That would be our final answer. Final problem of this lecture. This time, okay, we need to figure out where is this vertex. It looks like the vertex is at 0, 3. So that means inside absolute value, I am just going to have an x because it would be like x minus 0, and I don't need to write the minus 0. This 3 value is going to be added after our absolute value symbol. Now the final thing we need to figure out is what should our a value be. So I'm going to pay attention here, and it looks like we're going down 2 and to the right 1, which would give us a slope of negative 2. So my equation here is y equals negative 2 times the absolute value of x plus 3.